Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, I title this message, No Boundaries for Dysfunction. No Boundaries for Dysfunction. The boundaries that we are to set up are there to keep us from losing our minds, losing our finances, losing quality relationships, a great reputation, Boundaries were never meant to be something frowned upon, something that is considered bad or sinful or anything else that the enemy or enemies have tricked you into believing. I establish my boundaries because I don't want to end up being the cause of someone's downfall or I don't want to be the one That later on is in the corner crying because once again, someone has overstepped their boundaries. Come on. When you've gone through a lot of issues with people, you learn from your mistakes. You learn from your weaknesses. At least you're supposed to. And so these boundaries are established. They're like walls. They're like fences. They're like gates to keep the evildoer, the wicked one, the manipulative one, the one that played you two, three, four, five, ten plus times out. Of course, the enemy wants you to believe that what you're doing is a bad thing. Of course, the one who's gullible, naive, and easily deceived wants you to believe that You are a bad person for saying or doing what you are doing to protect yourself as well as your family. Sometimes the boundary, the fence, the gate, if you will, is when you block someone from calling you. Sometimes that boundary, that gate, that fence is when you are using what one listener said, the gray rock method. Those of you all who are familiar with this, this is something that happens with individuals who no longer want to deal with, engage in conversation, a person who is narcissistic, abusive, or what have you, they go into a space where they're nothing more than a rock. You can't interact with a rock. You can't talk to a rock you can't make a rock do anything this is where they are in some of these relationships I'm establishing my boundary because I know that I can't trust you I'm going there with some individuals because we have folks who think they're getting away with things and they're not emotionally you have to establish boundaries Because someone acts as if they care, they love, they're very affectionate or sweet or kind or of service for a limited time. They carry on relationships like someone who has a coupon in his or her hand and they're ready to cash in and they find out that there's an expiration date. Well, we got individuals who they carry on with relationships with an expiration date. And you don't know about the expiration date. You figure that his or her kindness, service, what have you, is unlimited. Well, if a person truly loves you, that's just what it is. But if a person has stopped loving you, don't want to have too much to do with you, then yes, they do have an expiration date. And whatever the reason, the point is, is that they don't want to continue to have a connection partnership, business arrangement, intimate partnership with you. One of the issues, though, that drew me to this message, and I thank the one true God, is when you are the individual who doesn't want to establish boundaries. 
you have lived most of your life uninhibited. You are the one that I don't think it's necessary to have a gate or a fence or anything else around my heart, my emotions. I think that everyone should just get along. And even if they don't get along, well, we should just be big on forgiveness and, you know, it's okay. And let's just move on. And this is why some individuals eventually end up committing suicide, end up raging, end up wanting to pay everybody back, including people who didn't do all of what was done to them. I mean, come on. No boundaries. Uninhibited. No limits. So dysfunction shows up and says, well, I have an in. Thank you. I'm going to take advantage of you. I know you have a loving, a sweet, kind, whatever type of heart. Yeah, you do great service, but you don't have limits. You don't have boundaries. So I know you're going to forgive me, even though I've said, once again, something that I shouldn't have said. I've done something that I shouldn't have done. Dysfunction creeps up. And before you know it, you're ensnared and you're in a relationship, connection, partnership, what have you, full of strife. Some individuals are by themselves because they realize, <laughs> Proverbs 17, 1, better is a dry morsel with quietness. Some people may have accused you of being bored or having a boring lifestyle or you don't have too many friends or what's wrong with you. Better is a dry morsel with quietness than a house full of feasting with strife. Someone is so desperate or a group wants people to connect so bad to feed their lonely appetite that they're willing to have a house full of feasting with arguments, fussing, fighting, disputes than to just sit quietly with not much food, just enjoying a peaceful time. No boundaries for the dysfunction. Come on in, anger. Come on in, thief. Come on in, greedy person. Come on in, liar. Come on in, conniver. Come on in, womanizer. Come on in, everybody just come on in and gather around the table. Yeah, because Jesus, he was around all sorts of people, but even Jesus had boundaries. Jesus wasn't going to just let people just say whatever and do whatever. When the time came for him to permit that sort of thing, there was a mission behind it. You're not Jesus. I got to say that. You're not Jesus. You're to walk like Jesus, act like Jesus, but you are not called to allow circumstances to happen where you're hung on the cross. The enemy, though, he wants to make sure that every single believer is destroyed. He wants every single believer to reenact pretty much the same thing that Jesus already did. He wants you to be ignorant of what Jesus already did for you. He is your personal sa savior. He is the one who already carried the cross, already was sacrificed. So why are some individuals sacrificing themselves? By doing something that seems so simple yet so complex, not establishing boundaries for the dysfunction. In a dream I had, there was this uncle who showed up and he said, here, here's some chocolate. It was some of the finest chocolate. And I took a piece of it and I said, mm, this is so good. And I said, thank you so much for giving this to me. And he looked at that chocolate that was in my hand and Eventually, what he did was he started picking off the chocolate. I said, I thought you gave this to me. And as he continued to pick from it, it started melting. He ended up taking all of it. And some of you all know how chocolate is when it starts to melt. He started taking all of it out of my hand and he smeared it over a half eaten piece of cake. And I looked at him and I said, why would you do that? 
And he said, because I'm almost running out of sweets. And so I need this. I said, you took back something that you gave me. And he said, I'm almost running out of sweets. I'm going to keep this. You got an individual that gives you something only to take it back or look for an excuse to take it back or realize they don't have enough money to buy one for themselves or they're hoping and praying that you don't like it too much. Ooh, come on. Gift giving is like this, isn't it? Tis the season. Someone could be given to you emotionally only to take back all of those happy, sweet, kind, considerate emotions because they're afraid of being vulnerable around you. They consider vulnerability as a weakness. So you only get to see the so-called decent, good, respectable, sad, loving sad for a season. Hmm. Hence Christmas, New Year's their birthday, an anniversary day, what have you. And that's all you get. And this is why some individuals do end up guarding their heart, establishing boundaries. Some of you all say they have a fence around their heart or their heart is, is cold or what have you. Because people get tired of folks taking advantage. People get tired of other people having boundaries And there's no room for them to show up and offer a bit of service or show some loving kindness or what have you. Oh, so is this what you're going to do? You're going to establish your boundaries. You're going to make sure you look out for yourself. You're going to take that chocolate and you're going to use it for what you want to use it for. You think you playing me. No, what you just did was you showed me who you really are. So the next time you offer service or what have you, I know who you really are. And I'm going to make sure that I'm guarded and I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to let my guard down. I'm not going to allow you to creep in and say that you're giving me something, but then you're going to take it back. Oh, so you're giving me your emotions today. Oh, thank you very much. But I know better because within a matter of seconds, minutes or what have you, somebody else shows us up, switches on, switches off and we're back to, oh no, I can't give you conversation. I can't give you money. I can't give you time. I can't give you energy. I can't give you gifts. Or if I give you gifts, it's not really your gift, but it's our gift, or it's just yours for a limited time. But then I'm going to take it back. Jesus. Am I speaking someone's truth? And so some folks will take the scriptures and they'll be used and abused by the very scriptures that they're supposed to follow. Yes, but not be a fool about. The narcissist will see you and see that what you're doing is good. It's righteous. It's wonderful. The narcissist will then look for an opportunity to take advantage of you. That one that has the mental shortcoming will look for an opportunity to take advantage because you don't have boundaries because you never told me what the rules of the game are. Mm, you see, somebody needs to tell somebody what the rules of the game are because you know they're playing a mind game or two on you. So it is your responsibility to establish the rules. The rules are, the boundaries are, the limits are. Once again, for those that, hey, unlimited finances, right? You never told me how much to spend. Mm, somebody shows up, they take advantage. You can say whatever, you could do whatever, it's cool, I'm good, okay. So I'm going to say whatever and do whatever this day. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you should have established your boundaries, you see. The devil shows up in so many different ways, doesn't he? Drinking. Here's a drink. Here's two drinks. Here's five drinks. You never told me how many drinks <laughs> you can handle before long. 
you're drunk and the devil of a man or woman shows up and they're taking your money they're taking things out your house that's why some people love to pour drinks because they know what drinking does to some people there's some people who love to cut up some cocaine and to shoot up and pop pills and things like that because they know what it does to people they know how to get information from you they know how to take from you so we got those individuals who they know who you are and they take advantage using the very scriptures that you're supposed to be using in your quiet time but at the same time establishing your boundaries proverbs 17 now says he who covers an offense promotes love right but how long are you going to cover that offense he who covers an offense promotes love, but he who repeats a matter separates best friends. Now, this is the part that we focus on for purposes of this message. If you don't have boundaries when it comes to a person who continually hurts you, abuses you, lies to you, takes from you, or what have you, you are going to continue to be used and abused by that person. But when you establish boundaries, you separate. Sorry, but we're no longer best friends any longer. That person needs to realize, they need to understand the consequences of their actions. I've established my boundaries. I've drawn a line in the sand concerning you. I told you repeatedly, please do not say this or please do not call me up with this or please, I beg of you, don't do this or don't do that. The person continues to do it. What am I supposed to do at this point? Come on, somebody, they're listening. They want some advice. What are you supposed to do when the actions continue to happen? Separate. Sometimes you can't physically pick up and leave. So guess what? I'm not going to talk to you or deal with you right now. I don't have to stay in the same room. I'm going to move down the hallway. I don't have to go wherever you want me to go and do whatever you want me to do. I've realized that what you are doing is not healthy. It's dysfunctional. I've repeatedly told you how this hurts me. You want to give me every reason under the sun as to why it's okay to treat me like this. You're drawing the line in the sand. Now the person has to think. Now the person has to figure some things out. Now the person has to realize what they're saying or not saying or what they're doing or not doing. How it's impacting not just you, but the whole household, because a lot of times that's what's happening. Other people just aren't saying anything, but they're being impacted. It's a slow death. It's a potential friendship that's that could have been, but isn't. You know who you support, you know who you connect to, you know what your hobbies are. And if those sorts of things that you're doing are causing division between family members and friends. And it's not in your best interest or it's not in the best interest of others who are decent and righteous, then yes, okay, I could say there lies a problem with you. But if it is in the best interest that you stay away or it is in the best interest that you're not picking up the phone and it is in the best interest that you're not doing anything that is going to cause you to corrupt your good manners, then hey, hallelujah, you're on the right side with the Lord. But dysfunctional people will corrupt your good manners. Dysfunctional people will lie to you. They will tell you that what is blue isn't really blue, but it's green. Come on. Dysfunctional people will tell you that they love you, but you can't tell. What's this so-called love? No, what I see is somebody who's keeping me around for benefit. What I see is an individual who just wants to take advantage of individuals because there's something to gain. What I see is an individual who is looking out for self, but is hiding 
hiding the truth by saying that we're all in in this together, but we know better. The beginning of strife is like a breaching dam. Therefore, stop contention before quarreling breaks out. Those of you all who have been so warned time and time again, be quiet. Stop. Don't talk. Just no. Leave it alone. Drop it. It's not worth it. Come on now. Don't do this. Don't say that again. The beginning of strife is like breaching a dam. Therefore, stop contention before quarreling breaks out. You can establish boundaries and you can say no to dysfunction without arguing. Somebody says, well, how do I do that? You just don't say anything. You just do what you need to do. You mean what you say this time. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger. It is his glory to overlook an offense. You can overlook an offense, but you don't have to be a fool about that offense. Oh, I'm just going to overlook this one. Okay, so you overlook this one, but you also remember to establish your boundaries. So that way the offense won't hurt so much. It won't keep playing in your mind over and over again. I can't believe she said this. I can't believe just establish your boundaries. It's real simple. Now, I just want you to know that the last time when you said such and such, I overlooked that. But this time around, I realize that you're going to continue to do this. So let me establish my boundaries. <laughs> let me tell you how this is going to go. And they say, well, I don't like that and I don't appreciate it. And they want to start that arguing. You just kindly walk away. At least make sure that, that when you walk away, you don't have your back totally turned. Because they might hit you depending on what type of personality that you're dealing with. But you just back up and you move on and you continue about your day and they want to continue to argue. And then all the while you're making plans. Many a person realize that this is not worth it. This relationship, this partnership, this business arrangement, what have you. You don't like what I'm saying. So you feel like you want to say whatever in the comment section. I establish boundaries. Blocked. (laughs) You see what I mean? Even something as simple for some of you all, you say even a YouTube channel, even a YouTube channel, you got, you got people who they think they can say whatever because they're on the internet. They think they can do whatever. It is an honor for a man to keep aloof from strife, but every fool will be quarreling. Should I, should I? respond to this comment no where where is this person going with this comment hmm oh I see somewhere along the line they got offended so now they want to go on attack okay no (laughs) you see this is what you're doing when you're face to face even with some individuals you're saying to yourself okay now why would you bring something up like this at this particular time. Seems like you're still hurt about it. Would you like to talk about it? But let's talk about it away from folk. No, I want to talk about it right now. I want to let I want to talk to the manager. I want to talk to your mother, your father. I want to get this out right now. Okay, you know what? If this is what you're going to do. And it's quiet. Don't you have something to say? I have nothing to say. Well, you were to, okay, you can keep on blaming, shaming. You can even go into denial because I could say some things about what you're up to. Wait, I never, okay, see? What are we going to do with a person like this? We're going to mark them. You got too much work to do. You got too many things that God wants you to do before you leave this planet. This is why you need to know what your plan is and work your plan. Go to the one true God in the spiritual realm and ask him, what is my plan? So that I'm so consumed with that plan that I don't have time to be quarreling with individuals. That I'm so consumed with that plan that I've established a gate, a fence, a boundary that no man, no woman, no child can cross. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand, Mark 325, and this is what is happening. But for some of you all, it is a good thing because it's been a long time coming. Hallelujah. 
You don't want to unify. You want to divide with your silent treatment. You want to divide with your narcissistic attitude. You want to divide with your mean spiritedness. You want to divide with your ugliness. You want to divide with your little gossip. You want to divide. So guess what? You got just what you wanted. You're by yourself. There's many a man as well as many a woman. They were by themselves or became lonely or what have you because somebody pushed them out. Not because they took the liberty of being alone. Somebody said, enough is enough. I can't deal with your arguing anymore. I can't deal with your anger. I can't deal with your silent treatment. I can't deal with your ignorance. I can't deal with the fact that you're putting everybody above me and you could care less about me. And all I am is the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker for you. Not everybody is a victim. We do have the abusers. Not everybody is crazy around these abusers. And some of you all, you need to put some boundaries around you when it comes to communicating with these abusive men and women. You know that they have demonstrated that that's just what they are, but you just let them run their mouths about the victims. You let them drag the names of their victims in mud. Because that's my brother, that's my cousin, that's my sister, that's my whoever. And because the family has not disowned, because the family doesn't establish boundaries when it comes to abusive men and women, the abusive people continue to reign supreme in these families. When will the collective get together and say no more? You know who that man is. You know who that woman is. This sort of thing happens at workplaces all around the world. The abuser gets away because nobody wants to check that abuser. No one wants to say, stop saying those things. Stop doing those things. No one wants to get human resources involved. No one wants to look up labor laws. No one wants to do anything, but as long as he's not over here cussing and fussing, I'm good. So dysfunction reigns supreme. God is tearing down the abuser in so many different ways by using those who are not fearful. No boundaries for dysfunction will be many individuals downfall. You thought it was cute. You thought it was nice. You thought that the person was sweet until that issue showed up at your doorstep. Now, what are you going to do about it? You establish the boundaries. You set up the defenses. You distance yourself. You separate from. You go low contact. You go no contact. You look up more about the gray rock method. You do what you can to safeguard your mind, your body, your spirit. And if you're spending time with the one true God as much as you can, you will rise above the mistakes that you made. I thank you as always for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube and I'm Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel and thank you.